We've seen a tremendous amount of change in terms of viewing habits over the past few years. We saw an initial shift into streaming television. Initially, it was really subscription-based. And then we've seen this second big shift, or at least a second phase of the big shift, into ad-supported streaming television. And so it's a widely accepted form of watching television now. It's a model we've known for many years. Um, traditional over-the-air cable has had advertising for many years. Now people are engaging with it in streaming formats. Uh, and so if we come back to your question, so right here, right now in 2024, what is the new thing or what, what is the implication of, of this ongoing change that we've observed? And we really think that there's two things. So I think the first is consumers seem to be telling us, in fact, they, we did a piece of research recently, the vast majority of, of streamers want to shop via their TV, either directly in the advertising or the content, or merging that shopping experience to their mobile phone. So whether that's a QR code uh, within an advertising unit, bringing that shoppable experience to their phone. And we, we had tremendous success last year, for, just for example, with the Barbie campaign. Um, Barbie ad natively within the UI on one of our ad units, QR code, people clicked the QR code, went and bought tickets for their local cinema. That's an example, an example of shoppable. And I, I would just say what's interesting, the technology has actually existed for a while. So it's not really us saying, hey, we've got this new shoppable technology. What's new is consumers' openness to it. I think 12 months ago, 18 months ago, people weren't really looking to do shoppable on their TV. Now they're ready for it. So I think that's the big shift for, for 2024. Yeah, in the past, TV, uh, they've always described it as more of a lean back experience. But now, uh, I, I think you're right, it, c consumers are getting more acclimated to seeing offers and QR codes and that kind of thing. Um, so does how does that change uh, the way brands look at CTV? Is it, uh, is it more full funnel, would you say? Or, or how do you uh, reach consumers at all these stages? Yeah, I love this question. I think... It's exactly what you mentioned. So if we, if we just take linear TV, it had the sight, sound, motion that brand marketers love for making an emotive connection. And we've always loved that. CTV maintains that, but what it adds is what we, what we love about digital. That is the addressability, the accountability, the measurability. And so you, you really have the best of both worlds. And I call it performance storytelling. So it, it's no longer the case that you need to choose between being a brand marketer or a performance marketer, and, and those things are often governed by your category, your specific company, but now you can be a performance storyteller and do both. And so here we are in 2024, uh, it's a big election year, presidential election. It's, by all accounts, it's gonna be a record year of spending you know, billions and billions of dollars going in, not only to the presidential campaign, but other local campaigns. Um, CTV, how is, uh, how is political, spending in CTV going to work together? Yeah, I think that this is one area, the political spending in CTV, that I think there's a lot of eyes on trying to understand how big it will be. We believe it's going to be really big. And I'll just say, it's easy to forget that in the last US presidential cycle um, four years ago, ad-supported streaming television was not really a thing. Certainly it was extremely nascent. And so the available footprint of inventory just wasn't there. So this will be the very first presidential election where there's a meaningful investment into connected TV and connected TV for political advertising. Um, the the more, more bullish case scenario, and there are, there are some pundits out there that believe this, some people believe that connected TV could even sway the election. The, the party that leverages connected TV, the addressability, the customizability of the messaging, even the ability to target messages within certain electoral districts. Um, within the electoral district, here's my message for the red side of the aisle, here's my message for the blue side of the aisle, and they can be different. So you have that highly addressable medium, you're able to tailor the message to, to be most meaningful for your audience. I, I think it's going to be an interesting one to watch. And finally, Tony, uh, a few weeks ago, there was a big announcement. Uh, you know, Walmart, the biggest uh, retailer in the United States, uh, is buying a, wants to buy a television manufacturer. I won't mention the name, um, but I'm just uh, curious if you're able to comment on it or if you have anything to say about how it may change some of the dynamic in what you're dealing with. Yeah, I think everyone's finding this very interesting. So. Walmart's announcement that they intend to get into the OEM, the TV OEM game, is interesting. I think the first thing that we need to say is it's not, at least from an outsider perspective, 
I don't think that anyone genuinely believes it's a hardware play. It's not really about manufacturing TVs. It's not really about selling the TVs. Although I'm sure there's some sort of economies of scale. I'm, I'm sure they're sort of reducing the, the supply chain there and I'm sure there's benefit to that. But I think what all eyes are on is the advertising footprint of, of that uh, announced intention to buy. So if it closes, and I, I think there's some question mark over what, what's the time frame? It seemed like a pretty long time frame. I think it'll be an interesting space to watch. Also, obviously, Walmart has existing agreements with other um, OSs. So it'll, I, I don't know what's going to happen there. Their ACR, uh, I think there are existing agreements out there from their intended acquisition target. A lot of questions, but at the very least, it's very interesting. I think it underscores the value of connected TV and connected TV advertising. They see it. Um, all attention is going to the streaming form of television, and ad dollars follow. By, by OS, that's operating system, that's the software that comes on uh, these TVs, right, that, that apps exactly. load onto. Yeah. So, so for example, with LG TVs, the, the operating system is called WebOS. So on all recent LG okay. TVs, it runs WebOS. We're able to push native advertising that are uh, native advertising that's endemic yep. to the OS, as well as within content such as our fast service uh, LG channels.